Okay, so I'll talk about this later more. So now we're getting back to the Heilige Rambam, or the Heilige Rambam's Rebbe, from Yovan. And as I, where are we up to? Let's try to do this. You could take a notes or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I have my, I think you should all get one of these, because I'm, I'm working from it. Where's the paper that I gave you before? Oh, yes. Is a Okay, let's see where we could where we could continue. With the number eleven now, right? Number eleven, the class number eleven, yeah, but it's like one one, like the same one as always. Um, <laughs> Zazoy, we're gonna hazard hazard as always and try to see where we are. And I I did a few one important point, made two important points last week, but. Um, I think uh, I spoke with people, and I think that we still have to clarify it better to be able to continue. We, we in, in general, understand there is something, there's something, Sigya, called the Aristotelian understanding of the soul. Okay? It's such a subject. And the main place, or probably the main place where it's explained, is this chapter that I gave you. There's two more chapters that, that continue this, but um, this first one of them. And then going on, but this is like the most important part. And it's important uh, in all kinds of ways and historically and so on, we discussed that already. Now, in order to even get at what it is and how it's supposed to work and then what, what kind of implications it might have and so on, you need to have in your head the whole system. This is why the Ramam said, this is why I said that our secret, you know. Because you can't understand it, I can give you a definition and in one of the pages here I have a list of like eight definitions that he gives. And these in the third page. I got all of them have it. You would say something. This is like the definition. If you want to know, like the final, the most general definition, right? It's not of a specific soul. It's what a soul in general is. You would say soul is the substance corresponding to the proper account of a natural body with ha which has organs. Okay, that's the lush of, or another way of saying of the first actuality of a natural body. Okay, that's what a soul is. Problem is that not even one of these words in the sentence uh, have any meaning, and even if they do have meaning to us, we're substituting our meaning for the original meaning. Because is is a word that needs to be explained, and substance is a word that needs to be explained, and actuality is a word that needs to be explained, and natural is a word that needs to be explained, and body needs to be explained, and of needs to be explained, and life needs to be explained, and potential, potentially every single word here needs to be explained, and they don't really mean what we usually think that they mean. In other words, there's like a whole system of thought which is based and using these, these, these words, these terms, these concepts. And through them, through those very basic concepts, he built everything, or, and many people after him uh, live in that conceptual world. We don't live in that conceptual world. Or if we do, it's in a very uh, warped version of it. So we need to try to like, retrace every single word of this to be able to uh, make any sense. That's, that's the, the challenge, the big challenge, even before we even get to figuring out what to do with this. Um, what he does, if, even if you look in this chapter, the, the, the mazel the, the the, the, is that we don't have to make this up, right? And another, some other systems of thought, we sort of have to make this up because the people that wrote it also had their whole uh, a meaning for every word they used, but they didn't actually ever define them and tell us what they were, so we have to sort of imagine what it is. But the, the big mazel with Aristotle is that he actually explained everything and like literally tried to like write everything down from the beginning and explain every word and and then when he is in his more advanced books, like 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 on the soul, which is not like the first book that he's supposed to read, uh, he's literally using. He says like doesn't, sometimes he says like we've already explained, or just you says something that you should already know, like that this is the basic concept, and now we're just applying it in this way and in this specific way. So this is a uh, side note, but this is why I think that out of all the systems uh, that exist and, and systems that Jews know for, know about, at least. The Aristotelian system is the easiest one to learn. At least it's possible to learn. Because it literally has like a manual, either in Aristotle's books himself or people later that try to explain it, where it takes you step by step. It might take a very long time. And it might be very hard for a contemporary person to do it because we're so used to being, thinking that our concepts are the right ones. But it's at least possible. Uh, whereas if you want to do uh, something like, whatever, some other systems that people know, it's, I, don't, I think it's possible too, but it's much harder. Because you don't have that map laid out anywhere. Or the full account. <coughs> yeah. 
like maybe maybe Chabad also makes sense somehow, but they never even pretend to start from the beginning and build things up. So it's very hard to even know what the hell they're talking about. Okay. So so we we started to actually do this. So this is all like the Agdama. This, so we should be on the same page as what is we're doing. There's a first book, of course. I mean, so Aristotle himself doesn't literally say this is the first book, but the traditional Aristotelian universities had first books, yeah, and even had prefaces to the first books and prefaces to the prefaces. Categories is the first one, right? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the traditional, the Aristotelian Mahalach was to learn the logical books, which starts with categories and goes on to um, whatever, uh, uh, analytics, but before that, the interpretation and the sentences and, and topics. But kids said this logical, what's known as logical works, and then you would do uh, physics and mathematics, which Aristotle doesn't do more than really, but, and, and then only metaphysics. And on the soul is some, something of all of these things, so it's not clear where it fits in. But um, it's basically very advanced, one of the very advanced books. So yeah, there's, a, there's an official curriculum, and it was practice. People all started with, well, there's Porphyry's introduction to the categories, and then the categories, and then all the eight or nine logical books. And that's just to like, get on the same page of like, the words we're using and the kind of proofs we're using and so on. And then we, they were able to start doing anything else. And then you would have to like all of physics, and which includes there's a lot of physical works, but like the principles of physics, which is the physics, and and afterwards you would get uh, metaphysical things. Metaphysics is literally means after physics, which mm -hmm. sort of means that you should learn this afterwards. At least one of the things that it was supposed to mean. Um, and the fact that we're not doing it is a problem, so we're working a little backwards. But he's, you know, wait, can't have a class the for ten years. Philosophy of physics or the science of physics. Uh, okay, <laughs> what he calls physics, whatever, like, uh, change. Physics is a, word, a Greek word means nature, and nature means change, according to him. Things that change, and, and what does it mean to be change? Uh, what we call physics is not, not very related to that, but somewhat related to that. It's the, we, you could call the philosophy of physics, but it's not, not really that either. Because he doesn't have physics to have a philosophy of, he just has that. <laughs> but, <laughs> doesn't have, he's not talking about things like... Um, no, gravity or, or well he's talking about movement yeah but a kid said I'm gonna get this a little bit I can't uh, it's gonna start track me it's not the same meaning as modern physics no that's that's the that's the one sentence answer but I can't I'm gonna get sidetracked and I don't have a way to explain it like Galachas anyways or I'm not a lot of <laughs> I'm three to go them either so but that's the point there was a, there was like a traditional a traditional Mahalach and Rambam actually literally says in, in his in his first book in, in the first part of Maira and a few times that the reason why we conceal the secrets of Torah is because people, he says that this is the, well, at least the interpreter, his interpreters say that this is the nimshal of Yaakov in his ladder, where there's four levels and you got to go, Malach Elohim means, means Nevi'im, uh, people who are Malach Elohim, and they're Eulim Vyardim, but you need to go up the ladder to, to be able to go down and whatever that means, but you have to go on the ladder in, in the correct order and otherwise you can just break your legs. And breaking your legs is otherwise known as he doesn't use the metaphor of the ladder breaking your legs. He has a different metaphor, but it's known as as Hitzes Venevga. The Ramam is the one that makes this connection. And it's, to him, it's because with the, the main reason why people are Hitzes Venevga is because they learn things in the wrong order. Very, very, at least that's my interpretation. I don't know if it's... Why is it the Elish Benavir? Yeah, Elish Well, he has another thing about Elish Benavir, but jump to conclusions. That's literally what he says about Elisha. He jumped to conclusions. Yeah. Um, he thought he knew things that he doesn't really know. Yeah, and Ram says Shalem means knowing when to stop. <laughs> In other words, knowing what you don't know. Okay. Um, Mekitzer, um, so that's why it's hard to do what we're doing, but we try anyway. So what we see him in doing in, the, in this chapter is, is really working with concepts that he did in every one of these works and then applying them and creating out of them a little chillant, which is the definition of soul. So we try. So... What we did last time, and the last few times, is starting to, to have, talk about two things, right? We started to talk about one concept, and this is what he says, right? We have kinds of existing things, right? We discussed uh, a lot last time that you need to understand that there could be kinds of existing things, right? In their existingness or in their being, there's, they have different levels of being. And, for example, the most primary one that he likes to talk about is the difference between... Substance. Right? And that substance. Things that are that are a thing and things that are not that are about things. Accidents. Accidents. Kind of accidents, but don't think of accidents as something that just happened. That's not the correct uh, the equivalent of accident. It might be that way, but that's not the thing. The thing is that it happens to something. 
right? In other words, it's a thing that we cannot, and then just to like the one word definition of this would be something in order to which to define, you need to talk about another thing. Very, so it's not independent. You could use this word independence. In other words, in order to explain what, you know, what is this example? In order to explain what large is, you need to, there's no large by itself. You need to have a large thing. Even not to, by side to explain it, and therefore it's being. It's not only, not only the, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you need another word, it's not a full thing. Masha Einkain, very important. And for anything that's not a substance, you need to talk about a substance to, for it, to, to explain it, to define it, right? To say what it is, if I ask you what it is, I'll ask you what white is, you'll tell me white is uh, whiteness. Well, there isn't whiteness. So you've got to say it's the whiteness of something. Now, I could sort of abstract it and talk about whiteness as if it's a thing, but that would be sort of a mistake. It would not be giving a correct definition because there isn't undeveloped whiteness. So therefore, it's either definition. And when he says definition, it also means the, the thing that the definition is referring to, right? The being of whiteness or of greatness or of largeness or of number or of any of things like that is about another thing. So you can't, you can't ever give an independent definition of it which stands by itself. Stimmt? Very important. That's the main thing about accidents. They don't really exist. They're not, they exist only as being, now there's different, different kinds of accidents and different ways of connect, them connecting to their substance, but that's the main, the main thing. So just they need to happen to something. So white, white, the color white is an accident because you can never describe white in itself. If there's always a white table, a white shelf, white wall. Mm -hmm. White stone, whatever, yeah. So the feed, does the concepts exist? Or what concepts? Uh, not, not right now. It's a good question. I don't know what you mean by concepts, and I don't know what he means by concepts, and so on. Uh, concepts are a very weird word. What do you mean by concepts? Well, we can't get into this. He doesn't really. Concepts the, was an invention. No, according to him, math doesn't really exist. That's Aristotle's actual answer. Uh, math is only an abstraction. In other words, it, he's actually not a Platonist. Plato would say that math exists. But he, Aristotle, for example, the guy by math, that math doesn't think is a concept. Uh, again, when you say math is a concept, you're already taking sides in a certain math. Like but according to him, for example, math doesn't actually exist because math is about greatness and largeness and number. And there's no numbers. There's only numbers of. So it exists in the sense you could talk about an abstraction. If, for example, math is an example, it's going to be relevant as well, of something which, of which you can talk about an abstraction. We talk about numbers as not as related to, any, to anything, right? But there are no such numbers. So there's, in, in definition, they can actually be separated, but not in actuality. So it's a construct. Uh, again, this word construct is a, is a word that he doesn't really have, so he would say it, it has a definition, but doesn't, the definition corresponds to an aspect of something and not to something in itself. That's what he would say. He so wouldn't say that's a so made-up like thing. It's, like it's a not made-up. It's true. Meaning it's not exactly like large, because large really you can't, you can't speak about large by itself. But numbers you could speak about by itself. Like yeah. Dumb, but that's Maybe largeness on some level you could. Like the part largeness being smaller than the, the relation of large and small, whatever you could speak about. Wait, you speak Ma which math might be speaking about how also. How can you speak so, numbers but, by itself? But all math is speaking about numbers, not about... But they can't about be by themselves, they have to be attributed to something. Beside that, but it's speaking of those things, that, that we would say, speaking of those things only in a very specific abstract. We, we would call it abstraction, but not uh, talking about a different kind of thing. Um, and this is, but it's a side note, I'm, I'm getting uh, distracted. But the main point is, that it was just to answer Ari's question about concepts, or if, in other words, the, the, he, he does have the difference of things that, uh, uh, let's go back, right? We could say, um, we, we could some uh, an accident or something. The main, the main. This is the main, the main difference of things in the world. There's things that we could define by themselves. Now, even by themselves doesn't mean they have one simple definition. They could be complicated, complex things. But after you take the whole mass, it's a thing. Then you don't, you don't need to talk about any other things for it to exist. It's the other way around. There are other things that can only be said as referring to something else. Now, there's some. I said I said that it's the same thing, but it's not entirely true. There's some things that we could we could talk about an aspect of a thing by itself, right? Like we could talk about the math of math by itself, right? When we talk about triangles, we don't need any triangles. To talk about we're not not only we don't need we're not talking about triangle things. We're talking about triangles, right? And if you talk about triangle things, you're not doing geometry, right? You're talking about the triangle, but, but Aristotle says you're just talking about a specific aspect of a thing. But that aspect is always in a thing. It's it's stuck to the tr to the physical triangles. It's not an aspect of some metaphysical triangles and Olema triangles. It's an aspect of triangular things. And you're talking about that aspect as if, and ignoring everything, all the other aspects. That's what he thinks math is about. He's not a Platonist. Isolating an accident. Yeah, like, no, 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 yeah, you could say something like that. The abstracting one accident, we could talk about whiteness too, right? We could have a lot of discussions about whiteness 
in, in, in the abstract. It's not impossible, it's just that it doesn't exist. You can't give a definition of whiteness in the abstract, right? If you say what whiteness is, you would say white, a white thing, right? And its numbers are similar, they might be a little more abstractable than whiteness, but they're at least similar in that there's no number, no triangles in some ulama triangles, there's only triangular things. Okay. Here, are there some accidents that are, are, are more substantial than other accidents? Yeah, of course. All these things have levels. Not only is also substances that are more substance than other substance. And the, if, if we get to like, this, the, all these definitions are, are somewhat limited, or you could say somewhat relative, which, although he doesn't think they're relative in the sense of not having a meaning. But if they, when you ultimately play with them, they, he doesn't, at least in the first level in metaphysics, we can get to these kind of questions. Or in the first level, where he always like thinking in a very common sense way. Like take a table, it's a table that has some substance and then it has accidents. In other words, it's, it's green and it's high and all these things, but all these things happen to the table, are things about a table, and the table is just a thing. Well, to the extent that a table is just a thing, right? Then you could say a table itself is made out of wood, so the wood is really a thing, not a table, like we discussed already. But you could still... So, in, at each level, these, these distinctions make more sense when you like isolate one level and you talk about them. And then, if you want, you could go and talk about the universe and, and, and like what, what is the thing that's, that's all the things. But that's already a, 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 like a broader question or a more metaphysical question than the basic distinction that he's working with. It's very important in general. And, and he does talk about those things sometimes, but the well, first, the first thing is the important thing. Because sometimes, well, there's like a, a controversy if accidents could have accidents, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, according to the base definition, impossible. Because an ac accident is something that has to happen to a thing, but it sometimes seems to be possible. Saying, uh, but redness is something that, let's say, is in multiple objects, right? Yeah, so but... Do, do these, do, do, does the redness have anything in common with the redness of something else? No. Since the what makes like, no. one thing, in fact, the redness of the ball and the redness of the... Yeah, he, he thinks that there doesn't believe in universals, at least in the most sense. But that's a different discussion. The, the redness might, the, the balls, the, all the balls, see, the, 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 but again, these are all questions that, that, that open up if you understand the basic thing. They're good questions. And Aristotle says things about them, and even Aristotelian people say different opinions about these kind of things. Um, but we just need to understand the most basic like sentence where you say there's something that we can be described and can exist independently from itself and something that can't. That doesn't mean that it's ultimately true, that's important. For example, this doesn't mean that there's, you don't need a god or whatever, when you think about god, like at the bottom of the chain or a prime matter or whatever kind of things, it still might be true. Because you could always ask the same question at one more level. And Aristotle actually doesn't believe in asking the question to the end. He sort of says, at some point he gives up, sort of, and like says, this is the world, and Zemayesh, this is how it works. He doesn't, <laughs> but that's a whole different discussion. Uh, he's more interested in like making sense of things in the day-to-day -day world, in day-to-day -day life. He's not so interested, he is interested also, but he's less interested in like doing the like, the like, which he should do also, but the like thing where, uh, okay, what happens uh, when I ask you what's behind that and what's behind that and what's behind that and, and you get to the bottom of the turtles and find out which turtle is the first turtle. He's somewhat less interested in that question, at least in the first level. Because he thinks it's, it will be a lot to explain just how the second turtle gives birth to the third turtle and what a turtle is. You know the turtle thing, right? And he's not what? All the way there, right? Yeah. No, it's a true thing. But so that's why if you, if you say like a substance, a thing that can could it really be exists by itself? Like no, it has. It's a matter. It's a form of matter. And we're gonna get this in a second. It's made out of form of matter. So where the matter come from? Where did it get its form? These are real questions for him. And that's what physics is supposed to explain. But he still would say that it's a substance in in that level. It Although it can the, like could be reduced in some at the lower levels or the higher levels, whatever you want to call them. That doesn't make it all substance. No, primary, he's interested in, uh, but that's what would be a different trachma for him. Like it would be a different part of, a different part of science, a different part of uh, his his work. Like is he thinks actually that many people jump levels too quickly, like the Platonists. They like run and know about the world soul, but they don't know anything about their soul, and they forgot to explain all the levels in between. So he wants to like explain, give me one level and explain it well. Then we'll talk about all the other levels. Uh, does this make sense? That's a very general concept about. I think, and this is too general to be accurate probably, but <laughs> like all generalizations, but it's, it's a general thing of how to be able to grasp all these things, because I, I run into this problem when I try to explain to people, it's like you start saying, so, 
any of the four causes that you talk about, and any of these kind of things that you talk about, you get stuck in like, okay, so it's a, it's a substance that's needed independent, so it doesn't need a cause, it doesn't need, no, it doesn't need a cause. But for this level, it's, it's independent. Relative to the substance, it's independent, you understand? These are, at least, so at least substance and accent you can understand as relative terms. In other words, and there are different kinds of things in a very basic way, not just like this is on, stacked on top of the other. This is a kind of thing that only makes sense when it's stacked on top of the other. And that's the kind of thing that it, the sense of it is, or at least one of the sense of it is, that it's the thing to which things happen. So they're inherently interdependent. Substance and accident are, well, substance is less, is the one that this accident depends on. It's one way, really. Substance uh, is that which accident depends, if we're discussing it in this way. Yeah, but it's important that it's that yeah. way. Uh, I can't go the other yeah, way. You don't have a substance without accidents, right? Or you do? Well, we don't. There substances with less accidents than others, right? It depends what you mean by accidents. No, you. Um, it's small, let's say. Saying, let's yeah, yeah, you can't test something without a size. Not in the physical, in the physical a universe. A complex object is going to have more accidents. You might have, be able to have. A uh, uh, physical universe is the wrong term. To, uh, so I, I used it already too many times. It's the wrong word. It makes right? things you can, uh, you can In space, uh, in, in, uh, bodies can't, can't exist without size, for example, yes. But could things exist without size? Maybe. Substance, sure. angels, I mean, or intellects. Exactly. So it's not true that things, all things have to have all accidents. How? How Do all that? things need to have at least one accident? Even that, I don't know. I understand this as a general statement. How can there be a thing without size? A thought. A thought. A thought is not a thing. Well, uh, okay, a to the extent uh, we can't... We, uh, what is it? Not in space and time. That's what, uh, again, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going too fast. Whatever a thought is, let's say, again, like we can't do everything at once, but well, let's say a thought is a thing, let's say there's, there's, there's the nothing... Matter. I'm jumping to 50. Come yeah, on. exactly. Yeah. Uh, thought, it's not the word same thought. Intellect, according to him, is, is a thing and it doesn't... Current news, okay? Intellect is a thing that doesn't have space and time. And maybe even other things. It's not, it's not clear that... Uh, Your numbers? Uh, I don't know, those are accidents. I told you, yeah. According to most, what he generally says, math is not a real thing. Okay, but this is the most important thing, okay? And therefore, now, I, I really, I, so, therefore, we have this, like, main, main two boxes to fit everything into, right? It's fine, this is the problem. It's real uh, substances and accidents. So, the first thing we need to decide is if the soul is a substance or an accident. That's really question number one, right? Makes sense, because that's his whole world. Everything is either a substance or an accident. So is the soul a substance or an accident? You'll notice, and we already went through this once at length, I'm just hazarding it, that he doesn't ask, does the soul exist, right? Because the soul definitely exists. Because soul is just another word, Aristotle, and anyone else before, like, whatever. Because soul is, is a very funny world, we think that it's a whole thing. But for him, soul, or at least the beginning of the discussion, soul is just, just and even the word that we translate as soul, which is psuche uh, uh, in Greek, just means life, or movement, or whatever. It just means whatever you can, the, and then life is also too of a bigger term, right? But that's why we have to go back and say, like, if you walk out in the forest and you just see rocks and trees, and there's some kind of difference between the rocks and the trees, whatever that difference is, that's the soul that we're asking about if it exists. In, in other words, what kind of thing it is. That's all. Not <laughs> So we're very used to already having different ways of thinking, but that's, that's his question. So that thing shall is if it's a substance or an accident, okay? First, first very reasonable question. So now before he answers that, he needs to tell you a little bit more about what kind of thing substances are. Okay, very important. The second very important thing is that all substances can be said in three ways. There's three kinds of substances. Or really there's only one kind of substance, but we can talk about three aspects of it. That's the basic, the simple shot of how he understands things. Okay, and, and, and I'm reading literally from here. Under this heading, in other words, after the substance, the tuch substance, we can subdivide it into, we speak of, that's always, always how he says it, we speak of one thing as, or the philosophers like this word qua. Qua is just Latin for as. It's just a word that makes you sound smart. But, uh, right? Or I already told you, in Hebrew the word for this is bebchinas. People think that bchina is a magic word. Bchinas is qua. Um... Very funny, I don't think qua makes you sound smarter. No? <laughs> it's a weird word. <laughs> makes it like a duck. Okay. Anyways. But I'm going to use it. So, substance qua. The substance can be spoken as, of as. So, in other words, there's three aspects or three ways of talking about it, but not three ways in the thing. Very important. These three ways, these three things, they don't exist separately, at least not in substances uh, that we're talking about. The kind of substance we're talking about, okay? And these three things are? 
No, you already know. What kind? Th what thri three kinds of things are substance? Very important. But talk substance. There's three things. Well, two which are three. You already know those two. Oh, there's um, our potential potential things. Yeah, matter and and form. Okay, oh. matter and form, and the matter and form together, which okay. is which is the thing. So these are you understand yourself that these are not three separately existing things. Uh, in a different sheet, I read this from the Rambam, and he said that later. These are not three separately existing things you never find in the world. <coughs> Maybe not ever, but at least not in the world of mortal things. Uh, the focus. Maybe, in, again, maybe gods are different. But besides for gods and things like that, there is nev never anything that is a matter without a form or a form without a matter. In other words, they don't exist separately. In other words, in some sense, we could say, if you'll go back, but this is not really the correct way that he would say it, other people would say it like this. If we would go back to what we just said earlier about accident, and you take one thing that we said about it, not everything, but one thing we said that an accident is something that can only be defined by reference to a substance, that's true for these things too. At least for the form. Or really for the matter too. Form and matter can only be defined by reference to the form and matter. <laughs> There's no form by itself and no matter by itself. Well, matter is like analogous to the substance a little more here, but uh, matter if you of talk about... matter and form in the form of the matter. Exactly. Form. Exactly. There is no matter by itself. It's just a way to explain the matter and form. Matter and form is everything we see or a thing. Another way of saying a thing, a substance, is something that has a matter and form. And the reason why we separate this was in order to explain change, if you uh, remember. Um, but that's, that's not the today's sheet. That's physics. Uh, physics the is the book of explaining change. No, the form and matter together are substance. Uh -huh. There's no substance that's not form and matter. At least, again, I mean, besides have for its God. Red doesn't own form and matter. It's only the red. Right. Form red doesn't. Form and that's another. That's a machloikas. The big machloikas mefarshim if there are accidental forms at all. But the pshat is that not. Pshat that is though is well, that. Say we can see. In other words, in other words, if he, he for him this is what you're explaining things. Let's say if you, if you take a person, if a person is the substance of a person. Right, a man, a mm -hmm. uh, person is already a, ma a man is a substance of man. In other words, the form of matter which make up man, which are a specific kind of form and a specific kind of matter. Right, that's what man is, and that's what all the essentially things, whatever makes them. Re that's really basically almost the same thing as saying whatever the essential thing, whatever really makes a man a man. That's what it is. In other words, that is a rational animal. That's Aristotle's definition for man. A rational animal. That's that the substance. That's the form of man. Rational animal is the form of man, and it's made in the matter, which is the kind of matter that could have that form. That's Leopold's Leo, Leo, the fact that, for example, all men, even this is some accident, this gets into all kinds of con complicated. All men have here, or most of them, or all men have uh, certain. For example, here is the example that he talks about once. I read. Uh, it doesn't, it's not necessary for people to have here. In other words, if no people, if people would be bald or have zero here anywhere, there'd be no less men. They'll still be the rational animals. You don't need here to be a rational animal. But for some reason, maybe even if like a necessary reason somehow, and some, if you understand the biology of it, but for some reason all men have here. All people have here, right? Men is not men and not women. But, oh, so for some reason all men have here, so that, but that's still an accident of man, of the species man even. It's not a, something that, if you ask me, what's a man? A man is a guy with a beard? No, a man is not a guy with a beard. Or with hair, or with a certain color of his body, or anything like that. A man is what makes him a man. In other words, the form of matter of that. Everything else is about that. It happens to that, and therefore can change without the underlying thing changing, right? If you, if you lose your hair, you don't become a different kind of man. If you get a pious, you don't become a different kind of man, and so on. It doesn't change what you are. It changes what accidents, things that happen to you. These are like a, a different type of accident? <coughs> Which? Substance, these accidents? The hair of man is, is like a regular accident? Yeah, that's man? an example of an accident. Well, it's a quality. Yeah. Relative to man, relative to here or whatever, here has substance to itself. So it's made out of matter of here and whatever. But without man, it's it's an accident of man. Or being Greek is an accident of man, because just the location where he was born. It's not something that tells you what. There's no kind of man called Greek, even though Aristotle it's really holds that Greek is Adamiv Charabria. There's still no not. kind of person called Greek. It just that happens to me that all the best people live in Greece. But that's <laughs> no, that's really what he thinks, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, what the? Is it, is it, is it happens to me that the smartest people live in Greece, but he doesn't think there's such a thin kind of gavra that's called a Greek man. Is it important that the substance should be able to be, be found under different accidents? Like, if there's no such thing as a man without a heart? No, you could have an accident that every single man has. Okay. It would still be an accident, because it's not what makes him yeah, a man. Yeah, I'm saying... Why, that. how we decide this is a good question. But according to him, let's say a man is a rational animal, and he thinks, this is actually an Aristotle's example, he thinks that Laughing is something that all men do. It's a natural human thing, but it's nothing to do with what being a man is. It's an accident. It's like Lamessi has a name for it. I forgot the name. It's like a, a, in the, this forum called Rasgilla. 
in, in, in Hebrew it's called a zgila, by the way. If you're talking about zgila Yisrael, this is what he's talking about. But that's a different discussion, not exactly. But zgila, the Rashi, the, the, but he calls like a, a something property. I you forgot what it's called. Tools. But uh, again, maybe that's if, that might be. Some people think that that's the definition of man. But if you think that it's not, then it's not relevant. It's true. It, it could be. It doesn't have to be even one that's different. No, it, I told you, laughing is something that. Every, the species of man laughs, the species of man laughs, but that's not what makes it the species of man. That's just an accident that happened to happen to the species. Right, but if a man, for example, is not a rational animal under whatever circumstances... Then he wouldn't be man. The, the word man is the translation of that, yeah. Because okay. the word man is just a kitzah for rational animal. Because these are things about things, that's why. That's because right there, it's... it's Things that happen. Maybe, maybe here comes yeah. the but it's, but, it's not, but it's not a human, it's, it's a thing about it. About mm -hmm. You wouldn't say... He has ways of saying this in the categories that I forget now. You wouldn't say... Uh, laughs human or something like that you would say human laughs <laughs> but you would say rational is human or something like that <laughs> exactly when you say, when you say if you see someone laughing you know that he's a person but it's a simon right according to him no animals laugh is that true i don't know right? what it's not when you say that the, well, no what it's a sign you could use it to find out but it doesn't give you the definition um, it's not the gather of the zach it happens to be true for every one of those things so is this a type of accent that maybe maybe could exist on its own? Is that, is that where it gets at? No, it couldn't. Like exist. Could Laughing exist. can't exist without men. A, a here, a here could. Yeah, that's true. Happen. There's, there, uh, yeah, relative to the, yeah, that's why there's, there's level, that's what I say. Okay, that's going to be like a more substantial accent. Uh, maybe. Again, because it's a relative, somewhat, sometimes a relative term. Like you could have, you could be a re an accident of something and a, and a substance for yourself. That's why it's more complicated. But he would think of like the he would have ways of getting out of this like complicated definitions, but yeah. And and where's natural unnatural combination? Wait, wait, wait. We're chal nachnisht. Chal nachnisht. No, when they get to natural, and this anything about natural yet? Okay. I did that when last say, two times ago. When you say what we see, you mean see like sights with eyes, or or what do you mean what we see? Like when did I say see? Ear, wind. What is no, that? I think. No, that's that's. That's a form of. That, that's no, not a form, no. Right? It's a thing, yeah, it's a substance. So it's matter? Or whatever. What is it? It's a substance. It has matter and form. It does have matter and form? Yeah. Yeah, seeing doesn't mean that. The seeing is not even important. Okay, you could think, you could think, have things that have matter and form that you can only think of or we'd only know by reference, by some proof or whatever. That's not how we find out about it, is it the secondary discussion? So now I'm not, I'm not clear. What does matter and form mean? Oh, do I have to. So you're doing not by any sheet that I explained this. Okay, so then continue. Matter is the ability, the, the changeability, and form is the thing that it becomes into. Okay, but kids, uh, I'm not can't to give the sheet about matter and form now. Um, Should I try the uh, uh, shine that no. second one? <laughs> the changeability, form is the thing that it becomes into. It's when an apple changes into something. Into an apple. Punch, an apple sauce. Um, something changed and changed into something. The matter is what changed, and the form is now what it is. Okay, Aristotle's baby example is always a statue. The bronze in the statue is the form, is the matter, sorry, and the form of the statue like, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the, is that right? You, the so form, a statue is made out of two things, of a bronze and a tzir or whatever, whatever it's trying to, to, to represent. That's the two things. They can't be separated because you can't have that picture, that statue without the person. You could have the, the matter without that form, but would have a different form. That's always understood. So when wind, something's like, not flicking. What would wind be? Uh, you figure out how wind works. Does, uh, Aristotle actually has air, a whole book air, about it. it. <laughs> figure out the, how it works. The force of it. Uh, figure out how it works. Yeah. Force. No, no. Okay, okay. It, it works also. in a certain the way. Are the, are the, are the no, it works in some way. The, wind doesn't do every. Doesn't, doesn't wind work. doesn't become into doesn't become into into cows. It, it works in a certain way. That's its form. Doesn't have to have a form that I told it's a toy. This the bronze the statue example is just a simple example, but Musical everything has some right? kind of way of working. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay, a So the substance is a thing which can which has three ways of talking about. We could talk about the matter, we could talk about the form, and we could talk about the matter and form, which is really what we mean when we say substance. Sometimes people say the form is more of the you could say both, both ways. Sometimes sometimes people would say the this is like a machloikis and it becomes a big, important machloikis maybe. But sometimes people would say, well, the form is more substance than the matter because form is what makes it what it is and matter is just like Aich it needs to like be a form. Or some people say the opposite, that the substance is what underlies what it is. And sorry, the, the form is, the matter is what, is what has the form, so it like carries the form, so it's more. But the truth is, I think the basic thing is that there's, both of them are the substance. 
you can't have a sub again in the general okay so that's a basic um, a basic uh, halik, a basic uh, division of things that exist okay now just so we remember this is these are these this this second uh, thing corresponds also to another thing called potentiality and actuality it's the same thing but it's a different word or Can a different concept some matter that it has that it'll produce some accidents and not others yeah of course but, 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 but no, I'm not sure what you mean, but okay. I could say uh, matter is potentiality, form is actuality, or another word for actuality is completeness, or shlimus, and lishnakoidesh, right? Because it's really the same thing. We just told you the definition of matter is what can be, the can be of everything, and what can be doesn't mean that it's not now. Very important to remember, because it's going to make a big difference later. When I say that something is made out of matter and form, I don't mean that it used to be matter and now it's a form. I mean that it's still a matter and a form. Why? Because it's still changeable, right? In other words, a cup is made out of plastic. The plastic is, is somewhat of a cup, but it's not entirely a cup. It didn't entirely transform into a cup because I could even take the plastic and make it into something else tomorrow. I mean, if it would be very hard, it's still true, but it still has the, the potential in it. Potential was actual. The potential, of the one of the, actually, the form of plastic has is very, a lot of potentiality. It's very mattery, right? It's, <laughs> it can be very many things or really the oil that makes the plastic or whatever. And and one it it, it actualized, in other words it completed one of its sachunas, right? One of its abilities to be something which is to be a plastic cup. Right now. So it's actually a cup. But that is uh, doesn't make it oh potential cup. It's still a potential cup. The plastic is a potential cup. Plastic, in other words, and that's why plastic is not really what the matter is, but I'm not getting into this discussion right now. The matter is the ability of whatever underlies all the levels of plastic, really. The, at least ultimately, or even in the definition of matter, is oh, not plastic. The matter of. The I mean, plastic is the matter of this cup, right? Yes, and the, what we mean by that, not the plastic. the plastic. We don't mean, we don't, exactly. So that's why this matter is also a bunch of levels with the same story. So on this, this basic level, we would say, Right? Just like we discussed how everything is levels, I can talk about the level of cup where the plastic is the matter, but I don't mean the plastic, like, like modern physics think about it, I mean the ability of plastic to be a cup. That shtickle, there's a lot of, plastic has an infinite, almost maybe, amount of things that it could be, and one of the things that could be in a cup, and that's like, that's what we call matter. There could be cup, shabby plastic. The of everything that's contained in the plastic. But not the goodness of everything. The goodness of everything is still there. It still could be everything. But now it's a cup. So the goodness of the, the matter of the cup is the goodness cup. The, the could be of the plastic that is now a cup is what we mean when we say the cups matter. Exactly. 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 Very good. Okay, so that's another, uh, I don't know, not call it counting anymore, but that's another, another very basic thing. But it's the same thing as matter and form. So when we say matter, we mean potentiality. When we say form, we need actuality. But now there's a complication. I think we read went this also, we went through this at length last time also, where we explained that actuality, and since it has level, this is really just a, explaining a level in actuality, but th this level is, seems to be important for them. And some people actually, as I saw, have a lot more levels they want to do. But, um, but it's important for him, I think we discussed this also at length at one class, that actuality and potentiality are really relative terms also. Not only because of because the plastic is made out of oil, which is made out of dinosaurs, which is made out of whatever, whatever, but because there is different ways of being potential and actual. That's really what's the more important thing. And his example, and he wants to explain it to you, so he tells you that it's like the difference between you know, Knowing and thinking, or knowing and contemplating, right? Remember this, Drusha, right? Or the difference between Alam and Vaslan and Vaskan Lehman. Same thing, right? So, what? Think and thinking also there. Yeah, whatever. So, so exactly, right? So there's really like two, and these are things, right? These are, these are things, these are actual, in other words, if you think about actuality, in other words, I, I could say something we could talk about. Now, this, 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 this kind of two things, not everything has, but we'll get to that. But if he, that's what we talk about uh, thinking, for example, or any human ability, like uh, Shmuley likes the example of someone that he's a good player, and there's two senses of being a good player. Really three senses, right? There's the sense of having the natural, even let's talk about the natural, someone is born with a talent for, for music, so he's a good player, right? It means he has potential. That would be called first potential, according to Aristotle, because he can't actually play. You give him an instrument, he does not, he can't do it. So he can't, he's not really a player, he can't even play. He could, could play, right? There's two coulds. He could, if he wants to, he could learn how to play and then he could play, right? So there's two codes between him and playing. 
But this is one substance, very important to it. This is one substance because we get confused about. This is one substance. In other words, the koyach playing shebenefesh ha player, right? If we somewhat, this, that's what we're talking about. Something very small, but let's talk about that. The ability to play, the playing, and then it's a substance. Yeah, of course, it's a kind of part of a soul. It's 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 a soul or whatever. It's a kind of substance. Now that substance can exist in different states. That's why we have change. In other words, learning how to play, which is. A very also a prime example of the change of that form of matter is trying to explain, right? Some people first don't know how to play and then they know how to play. And where did that knowing come from, right? Basic question. Either it came from nothing, remember, or it, came, or it didn't happen. So therefore, the terzit it came from potential to be able to play. What? matter. So there's a, a matter of ability in your soul to be able to play. But when you're born, it's actually what's known as first potentiality, right? You can't even play if you wanted to. So. But obviously, it didn't, when you learn, it didn't come from, not, from nowhere. So you go to lessons and you learn how to play the instrument. And now, what did you learn? You didn't actually learn to play. Right? There's something tricky, right? You didn't, because the guy that went to the music school is not going around and playing all the time. Somewhat unlike your soul, which is doing soul things all the time. But it's not going around and playing all the time, right? So what he got is really a second potentiality. Or a first actuality. So he actualized the ability, the could could. Now he only has one could going on, right? In other words, he still has the could could. It's like only potentiality. There's two, three things now. There's a could could and a could. And then if he actually goes to the, to the instrument and plays, then he's playing. And then he's a could could playing. Then he has the second actuality or uh, first, um, yeah, second actuality. But a substance has an accident change about it. But it as a substance does not change. Do we ever say, so, like a cup, for example, can be, or, or uh, a tree can become bigger, right? Do we say anything different about its matter? Of yeah, 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 yeah. You, we're gonna get to this. That 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 depends on what kind of thing it is, what kind of substance it is. Some things, like trees becoming bigger, are actually part part of the soul of the tree that makes them become bigger. But trees are getting painted or not? See, that's also not a, what we call by natural things or not things that have life. Even. I mean, then we disturb the they substance. Grow. No, uh, but still, it was always a tree and still it will be a tree. It didn't stay change the substance. It's, it's the, the same tree. The, the, uh -huh. it's, not, it's the same tree that became bigger. But actually, it's different than a uh, rock, uh, rock becoming bigger because rocks never become bigger. And now you notice another basic thing how we got the difference between natural things and not natural things, or things with life. But not, sorry, things that have souls. Things that have souls can change themselves in, in ways that things that don't have souls can't. But I'm, I'm jumping forward already. I'm just showing you how this leads to that. I jumped the wrong. Okay. Okay, so now that we have these basic... Uh, now, So basically, now we're going back, we still don't know the f answer to the first question. We still don't know if a soul is a, is a, is a substance or an accident. Okay? I just gave you, before that, a whole different kind of things that a substance can be. It can be a matter or a form or both of them. And it, could, another, and it can be, really, another way of saying that it can be... But since we said that matter is potentiality and form is actuality, it can be two kinds of forms, really. It can be matter, it can be form one, or it can be form two. Yeah. I'm not really sure what the relationship is between the substance and the accident and the matter and the form. When There's no relationship. Bo both matter and form are about the substance. That's the answer. L one line answer. Don't get confused. I, you, I can confuse you, but that's <laughs> both, so both matter and form are about a substance. I connected it in different ways, but don't get confused. They're both about a substance. An accident might have its own or might not. That's a different discussion. Okay. Uh, and there's ways in which in which they're like this. Change so that another when a substance point. Changes into a different substance or changes uh, in the okay, substance. Okay, so there's two kinds of change. There's three kinds, six kinds of change, whatever. But there's different kinds of change. There's some kind of change where it becomes a different substance, and there's most kinds of change is the same substance uh, acquiring accidents. There's different kinds of change. There's substantial change. For example, when you die, that's a kind of change where substance stopped existing. The substance called living person went away. In other words, your soul went away. Same thing. Because the soul is a definition of a certain kind of substance that you understand. I hope you're starting to understand. Yeah. Exactly. If you change, cut off your pious, no substance went away. Just a substance acquired new accidents, a changed accidents. If, is there a yeah. difference between the forms that have two potentialities and... Um, and yeah, yeah. They're, they're called living. Like they're called living things. They're called things that have no, souls. Let's say this cup. The cup is... is, is, is no, it doesn't have this kind of two potentialities. So as like far as I can one, understand. Right? I don't so know the answer. Because it doesn't have a soul. That, that's exactly where we're going to get to this. Because okay. it doesn't have a soul. Souls are the things with, with first potentialities. Or first actual, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, second, uh, yeah, the two-step thing, that's the thing that makes soul things interesting, living Everything things interesting. Exactly. exactly. I, I think, again, I'm, I, if you'll find me somewhere that he says that everything else has the two things also, I'll be choyzeh, but as I understand, this is, this is really some, uh, a way of saying what's going on. 
Okay, so but the Bekitzer Amasa in my paper, I'm up to the end of number three only. So we have these uh, substance, and substance has three ways of being, and another way of saying three ways is we can have, uh, like I said, we can have be matter form and form two, okay, or different kinds of forms, or different kinds of actuality, okay. Now, go back. Now let's go back to think of what the story with these things that we're talking about, that we're trying to figure out what life is, okay. So now, first of all, since, and he's, this is something that he skips here a little bit, I don't know why, um, I'm not entirely clear about it, but first of all, since um, whatever it is that has life is something, is a body. Because nobody's talking about not non-bodies that, that have life right now. If we'll talk about it again, we'll talk about gods. But we're not talking about gods right now, we're talking about things that have bodies. Okay? You have to cut that out for a minute, even, even though maybe eventually we should talk about it. So, since, since what we're talking about is things that are bodies, And, and, and this is now comes another whole step we discussed. Um, I, I tried to explain this step to two classes already, so, but there's only one step in the whole argument. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can be a little more clear about this. So let's go back to like our basic observation. We're walking in the forest and we see things, in other words, bodies. Okay, we call them bodies, and this is another discussion. But we see bodies that some of them, and then we see three kinds of bodies, right? Very important. Let, let's stay fine. We see three kinds of bodies, okay? We've got bodies that are unnatural, we've got bodies that are natural, and of the natural ones, we've got living ones, okay? And these are not really uh, three kinds of things. In other words, there are basically bodies, like one thing, big thing called bodies. We could divide that one into two. We could say there are natural ones and unnatural ones, okay? And the natural ones we could divide into two again and talk about living ones and non-living ones. Does this make sense? Kolo elem kilo, not kol not elem kilo literally, but the things that we're talking about right now, very important, because not everything is a body. But for him, the basic analysis of body things is that they're a body. Just the like uh, people were confused last time. I'm not saying that everything must be a body. No, I didn't say anything about it. I didn't even say that, there, that bodies are a good concept. But I'm, I'm saying that the basic thing about things that are bodies is that they're bodies. Just like we said in the abstract, the basic thing of everything is that they're substance and form. The basic thing is about things that are bodies is that they're bodies. And the loy, this is the lo, just to make it clear, the loy Knuton, which thinks that the basic things, at least that another, there's another basic thing about everything, which is that they have space and time, or that they're in space and time. He doesn't think that. More like Einstein, but it, that's a different, just that was the main thing that I spoke about last, the end of last week, and it confused people because if people think that I mean, they say that this is the same thing as substance and the same, that there's only body, and no, I didn't say any of these things. That's, uh, if I said it, that wasn't wrong. Point is, of the things that we're talking about, but the basic thing about them is their bodies, and now, since we like to divide things in the basic levels, it is again important, we're not trying to just assume there's such a thing as body, and now let's talk about how it works, right? We, we want to talk about different kinds of body, this is the important thing, just like we discussed. Maybe I'll discuss this, but just like we understand that there's different kinds of being, right? So for this kind, now there's one kind of being called body. It doesn't exhaust being. No reason to think that it exhausts being. There's being that's not a body, right? not for us for now. But the being that is body, which is really the one we're talking about, because the life that we're talking about is always in a body. Nobody ever saw a soul without a body. Maybe we have proofs for existing, but that's not where we we're going to start, for sure not, right? So the things that we're talking about are bodies, and we want to, and Aristotle really thinks that there's different kinds of bodies. This is very important. Just like, and I don't know if I ever made this clear enough. There's different kinds of bodies. Not, not like we, now that modern physics doesn't believe this, right? Whatever it thinks a body is, at base, whatever, you go to the lowest level, it's the same for everything. They just have different uh, numbers of things or different configurations of things and so on. Well, maybe you could find a way to make this make sense with that, but that's not really how he thinks. He thinks, and there were physics physicists or natural scientists in his day that thought this, right? They said everything's just triangles and squares or whatever but at the bottom. Plato said things like that, or uh, Democritus, whatever. He didn't say that. He says that there's bodies. That's the most basic thing. He's also not an atomist and also not a time and space. There's a lot of, it's different than a lot of, in this physical theory, it's different than, than, than a lot of different theories. It's just important to realize that. And therefore, everything is a body. That's like a basic answer, the body. And now, we talk about bodies, he's going to say there's different kinds of bodies. And now, remember, body is really another way for form. We're going to get to that. But there's different kinds of bodies. 
And now we're gonna and and the, we could see and, and again this is something that you could be, you could see you don't need uh, any philosopher to tell you there are natural bodies unnatural bodies and living bodies uh, right again there's natural and unnatural bodies and natural bodies are divided into dead bodies and living bodies no unnatural living exactly living exactly exactly that's an empty category <laughs> there's no unnatural living things or living things have to be natural first yeah. what's the eye for this Christ he right? talks about it I don't remember so that's what talking about the soul is that it has to be natural. It's like going, it's, 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 all these all his things are here are like making things more specific. Like starting for the general and then this, cut this, cut this, cut this, right? He always leaves the, another whole side uh, that we can talk about separately. But. <laughs> okay, now, now, now let, let's think about something. Now let's go back to our matter form thing and, and explain why whenever we talk about different kinds of bodies. Now this is important. Now ba his basic mahalach here is going to be saying that since a body having a soul is a kind of body, that's the same thing as saying as a soul is a kind of actuality of a body. Okay, and just <laughs> try to make this more make more sense. This is a joke. Let's try to let's try to say this in the simple. I'm, I'm gonna what's for 10 15. In the most basic sense, I'm gonna stop after this. In other words, I'm telling you something a big chiddush. You never thought of this before, okay? <coughs> I've been trying to say this until from the first like I think two sheet was I put this as the header of the sheet. I've been trying to say this. There are different kinds of bodies in the world. This is a machloikus in, in science. It's a machloikus in, in, in philosophy, even. Kumat, it's a philosophy. But, right? We, all, all scientists, including ancient atomists, including Hantig atomists, including Hantima, time space, all these things, they all think that there's one kind of body. Now, this body does a lot, happens a lot of things. Aristotle thinks there are different kinds of bodies. Now, body basically means this thing that you see, or feel, or touch, or sense, and so on, or know. But there's different kinds of them. How do I know there's different kinds of them? Because they act in very different ways, right? Racks don't do much besides for racking. In other words, being a rack, they don't rack, but they, they rack, okay? I'm <laughs> serious, the experiment, everything is a verb because everything has an action, everything natural. Unnatural things don't, but everything natural does something. Racks do something, right? Uh, we discussed, uh, no, there was a sheet in Yiddish that I went through a rack a lot. Kids, racks do things, in other words, they fall, and they fall in straight lines, always, did you notice? Amazing. They do something very specific. Never fall sideways. Stumble. Never by mistake. They're not stupid. Right? I mean, they're, not, they're stupid in the sense they don't have intelligence, but they're not, they're not messed, they're not random, right? Racks are not random. Racks have, a, in other words, they're a kind of body. They do a certain kind, in other words, and racks is only one example, right? There's, there's fire, which is a body and goes up all the time, and water that goes somewhere else and so on. These are different kinds of bodies, right? So you see that it's not only one. I'm not talking about rack as, as the nature of the rack. I'm talking about the kind of thing a rack is. So it's a more general thing, right? What we call the doimim and the Kaidish. Okay, now there's other kinds of bodies. Now we talk about, let's say, let's just, uh, I, I could, uh, we would try to explain this at length, right? And then if you take a rack and you cut it into a, into a, into a stone, into a, into a knife, that's going to be an artificial body. Why? Because it doesn't do what it is, right? It doesn't cut. Very amazingly, racks, racks, rack. And knives don't cut. Notice, right? There's some very basic difference between that. Rack, uh, um, rack. Uh, if you take a rack and you make it into a knife, it's still a rack, and even has some things that racks have. It's, in other words, it's, a rack has the ability to become sharp. You know, a flintstone, you can make a brisk with it, and so on. But it, so in that sense, it's still a rack. It's still very much a rack, right? But it doesn't cut. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything different than racks. What racks did? It's still just falling straight down on a line, straight down. It's still doing only what racks does. In other words, this thing called a uh, knife is a fake thing. It's made out of real things. Fake is a weird word, right? <laughs> I like this fake news. But it's, it's not fake news. But it's, it's, a, it's a qua rack. Qua knife, it doesn't exist. It's not natural. It's an artificial thing. In other words, it, you could pick it up and use it, then it's very useful. But more useful than a rack without being cut into a knife. But it still doesn't do what it doesn't enact its thing. It doesn't do what it's, what it's supposed to be. So it's like sort of fake. Okay, it's artificial, and it only does things by, with with the guy that made it or with the person moving it and so on. It doesn't move in the way that it is. It moves in the way that a rack moves, right? That's what a very basic thing to say. That's why it's natural. Okay, so now going back to our natural bodies. Now, of course, living things are not like that, right? So we don't really have to discuss if living things are artificial, because living things do things by themselves. Okay, they're not like, they're very important. They're not, we don't, they're no, unless you're like, uh, uh, like I said, if there's a, a malach that's knocking each, each, each grass to grow, then it might be artificial. 
But without that malach, and Aristotle doesn't like thinking that, that he thinks that that's just a way of not jumping very quickly to things that don't answer the question. If you see grass grow, they grow, right? So they do something more than rocks, and not only that, they grow in specific ways, so they're not just growing up like, like, like a body, that's a dead body like fire that grows up. They actually work in very complicated but specific ways. So they're not only natural, but they're natural bodies, number one, because they're not artificial, right? They're not, they didn't, in other words, let's try to explain this, right? It's not that we add an artificial thing to a natural thing to make, to get a grass. Because artificial things don't grass, and then it would be like, it would still just be laying on the floor there and being a grass and waiting for someone to pick it up and make it a grass. It's grassing by itself. And now this is very interesting. A grass is basically a knife that cuts itself. Whatever it is, right? In the abstract, a knife is a thing that was made out of more basic bodies and doesn't do anything. And a rock, and a grass is also made out of sand and whatever it's made out of somehow. But it does what it is. Very interesting. So this is a different kind of body. Why? Because it doing what it does is, is, is somehow it's, different than a rock doing what it does? Yeah, of course. Because it... It does. Uh, the way I was explaining it now, it does the kind of things that artificial things would, you would expect artificial things to do. Okay. But that's a weird thing to say. But it really, what I mean, what we would say, it does more things than Rex. It does, it does more, you could even say like kind of more, in, I don't know, intelligence isn't the word you would say. Uh, it does diff a different kind of things, exactly. It does a different kind of things. And he explained that a rack doesn't only falls down, doesn't look like, like one thing, and this does like, uh, it, so it's, it works according to a plan in some way. That's what we would say, something like that. It's and not only I'll we'll get let's try to get to, to, to do, that difference. Is, is it I'm not sure now. The fact that it doing so what question. it does, all the various things that it that, that it does it more does. things. No, let's the basic things does more things. Maybe it does a different kind of things. I have to think exactly how. I know. Specific goal, right? Right, uh, but rocks also interact with their goal. But that's not the difference. With, with with other internal principles of rocks. Yeah, of course. Rocks are natural, so they have an internal goal also. Right, no. right, but I'm saying is, but that one internal goal is a simple one. It's not okay, so they do more it. things. They do more things. Okay. There's a difference. There's a difference in the kind of thing they do also, but I don't have the words right now to, to explain okay. it. They do more, at least more things than rocks. So they're natural things that do more things. Like I would say, it's something you would expect to be artificial, but it's not. Okay. So, but that's a, that's not language that he uses. I just made that up now. Um, it does more things than rocks. It grows and so on, for example. Okay, now, going back to our previous... Uh, later he does that, he has a way, and I remember it, but going back to our previous things, we said that there's kinds of bodies. Now, going back to our previous definitions of what all things are, we have to remember, we have to basically connect, that kinds is not a word for form. Because what in the world does it mean to have a kind of body? Body frame doesn't mean, again, body doesn't mean matter. I mean, it means now it's going to mean matter. Right? But body in fullness means a substance, right? Uh, we just said a body is a substance. But we just explained that there's not only one kind of body. It's not like body's not a simple thing. Body's not a thing that changed. Body's also a thing that it changes into. Because there's a body of a, a kind of body called a grass, a kind of body called a cow, and a kind of body called a horse. Right? So in other words, this is a body with a form. Right? So kind of bodies is just another way of saying bodies with forms. Kind is just a word for form, basically. Right? So when I told you the different kinds of bodies... They have, a, they have a natural form as opposed to unnatural form. Exactly, exactly, or living form exactly, as to exactly, form. exactly. So when I told you about kinds of bodies, what I, what I really m was saying was that there are bodies with different, kind, with different forms, okay? Unknown as these three, exactly these three things, the, the, the ones that are unnatural, the ones that are artificial forms, and the ones that have living forms. So now we understand, right? Mm -hmm. So, now, since, and since... So that's all. Atkan, we just got to the basic, de this his first definition of soul. In other words, since the, the form of a dead body is the nature of a rack, which is we call rack, the nature of racks, this is his word for the form of a, nat of a natural body is nature. <laughs> Same thing. But the nat when we say nature, we mean the form of a natural body. And when we say matter or body, ma na ma na nature, we would mean the matter of a, of a natural body, okay? Uh, artificial thing also has a form, but it's sort of external to it, right? It's a form that the guy that made it uh, imposed on it. And a natural body has an internal form. Then, in the natural bodies, we have two kinds of bodies. We have ones that have life, and this, in other words, they grow. They do things that life, thing, living things do. Right now, it doesn't give a more definition. Just it does, it has nourishment and growth and decay. Because it said it, whatever we mean when we say the word life. When you go in your forest and you see some things are alive, in other words, it's a different kind of things. It does different kinds of things. More things, you could say just more things. That's the, that's precisely the form that we call soul. So soul is a word for the form of a living body. Now we have to explain why it's the first actuality, but... 
So basically, we have matter and form, and then of form, we have we have we going from. No, we basically no 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 we basically again these are two uh, things we have the, 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 the empty concepts and then we're putting things into the concepts we have the concepts called substance which divides into matter form and form and matter and th forget the second actuality for now because I didn't explain get to it and the same thing we have body which is matter and that or substance he says body is substance body is a substance and that a one of the kinds of substance at least and th that divides into matter and form and, ma and form a matter. Form a matter is what we call the per a thing, and the matter of it is the body of it, and or what we would generally call the body of it, not what he calls exactly body, because form body is both. And the form of it is the soul of it. Well, not the soul of it. The form. No, the form of the form of it. Now, now go to your to your to your different kinds of forms. That's all. Now there's different kinds of forms. There's um, natural things, natural dead bodies. I don't. He doesn't. That dead is a real word. Real, weird word, right? Natural bodies, plain natural bodies. Artificial bodies, which we're skipping right now. And there's living bodies. Well, the form of living bodies has a special name. That's all. The form of living bodies has a special name called soul. And we can explain why, because of the second actuality thing. But that's it's a difficult thing. But that's the second thing. Things, and they're broken down into categories as well. Right? So each rock has its own form, but rocks also. Uh, there's a different, rocks, different discussion. That's a different discussion. Form that share something in common, right? He usually thinks about an individual. As primary, okay, and at least as an analysis, the, the species of rock, uh, the universal called rock, it's not for the not the But usually, the way he thinks, at least, is to start with thinking about one rock. One rock has a form called the nature of a rock, which is another way of saying that it rocks and it doesn't uh, burn. He's not concerned about the commonality between the. Form no, no, the no, not at all. Mm, that's not why where he gets the form at all, uh, not in these things. Uh, he thinks that that's a somewhat of a, again, there's different versions of what he really thinks, but in, in at least a reasonable interpretation that he thinks that species uh, only secondarily exist, that they don't really exist. Species only exist as uh, as all of their parts, all of their individuals, so that's that's not. It has a random thing that has its own form of whatever. What? It's something that has its own thing to form mm, Okay, the thing is that the spe no, because then there would be a... St he thinks that forms are things that that have some kind of stability. So species are what has stability. We could think about forms really, because, in other words, the 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 way that a tree grows into a tree is really something that you would talk about more belonging to the species of a tree. Because individual trees, specific trees, not <laughs> individual trees, don't always grow into the correct trees, although they still have this, the form of tree in them. But they might be broken or or stopped in some other way. That's why we sometimes say that we're really talking about this form of the species. Or individual men might not be so rational. <laughs> Although man is a rational animal. But he has, that's why we get to the, that's why this form is really a, a certain potentiality. Uh, but so that's we why just, we get to it's that. just what we can infer from the species is just what can tell us about the form of something specific. To notice if it's defective or otherwise. Or like while operating. He could say something like that. I don't know if he would say it entirely like that. He would say, well, yes, yeah, if without like noticing a certain regularity, he wouldn't have these kind of forms because like one living thing in the world, how would you would, yeah because you could be the, but there's a pro, exactly because you can't like explain it or you can't like have a theory of it but to not really thing. because it's like there are things that can be said of all living things right yeah yeah and that's which this is, form of living the that's factor, the soul right, yeah, of course it. yeah of course but that's not the main that, that's true but only that's what i'm saying only true in a limited way I'm we have to get to this I'm exactly i love the correct it's important right? yes yes it's important like we're saying we're right now we're not even talking later we, it is important for him to also to get it's even more important to him in a certain sense to get to the individual but that's again we'll, we'll get to this in in Perik Bez, he, he gets into this question a little more explaining what, in which way he needs the more the species and which way he needs more the individual. But anyway, that's enough for today, I think. Okay. Or too much. I'll send my notes uh, if you want to attach them in the video description. If you do, yes.